Hello guys, welcome to episode 4 of Mental Health Conversation. And uh, so guys, I know you're wondering who is stealing my intro today of the show. Um this is episode 4 of our Mental Health Conversation and today on set we are two of us and originally I say this conversation is a collaboration between Sunshine and Salam uh, Mitani TV. Yeah. Yeah. So today on set we have Ken. I won't say much about him. I'll let him introduce himself. I'll just let you know he's the face behind Filamu Mitani. And also another thing, he's the face behind the camera. So today in Mevuruta he's on set. Yeah. So basically I'm the founder of Filamu Mitani. We came up with uh, this kind of web series that we've been doing for the past three episodes. And I'm glad you've been watching, you've been subscribing and you've been sharing what you have been doing. And I'm really grateful. Thank you guys for sharing our work. Yep. Yeah. Today we're going to talk about uh, toxic masculinity and related with mental health, yeah, basically. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, episode 4 is about toxic masculinity and I didn't want, it to, handle it from, I didn't want to handle it from a female's perspective, so I needed a male on set. And because uh, Fila Montani also does the uh, new shows and uh, films in line with mental health, yes. I felt Ken is the right candidate for this conversation. So, toxic masculinity, you can start from there. Um, we'll dive into it right away. So, I'd just like Ken to tell us, he'll talk on behalf of men today. And in the society that we live in, we see that men are pictured in a certain aspect, what we call they are pictured to be tough, to be strong, you know. So when it comes to mental health, it will be so hard if a man opens up. So I would just like to ask Ken, do you think men are okay being labeled as tough and strong to a point that they are not supposed to open up about their issues? Uh, basically what we have in this world is that we've grown men or we've nurtured men and then we believe that men are strong. So when they suffer certain kind of trauma or certain they have gone undergone certain kind of challenges in their life, uh, they don't speak up because their nature allows them to be strong. But deep inside they are suffering. So from one moment you find that they've under suffered a certain kind of a traumatic event, they don't speak up. So it builds inside. So this kind of energy projects itself in a negative way at a later stage in life. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that is very key that I think we assume in our heads that men don't go through challenges, you know, because yeah. you always look up to them. Yeah. So at the end of the day, we expect that after they've gone through a traumatic event, they're not supposed to open up about it. Correct. So clearly from a man's perspective, they do face challenges, they do undergo pain, they do face trauma. Yes. But the only challenge they face is the society has not given them that platform to open up and talk about it. Yeah. Ken, do you think that the fact that men don't talk about their issues, do you think it affects their daily life? And if so, how? Um, That's a good question, yeah? yeah. Uh, yes, it affects their daily life. But uh, you find that the energy you're talking about projecting itself in terms of relationship they have with people, like you, you, it depends on the kind of person, the personality you have, like the introvert and the extrovert. So some extrovert will be quiet, some introvert will continue, uh, continuously remain introvert. So this energy that you are talking about projecting yourself in a toxic manner is because of the society, the belief we have towards men. So with time you find they slow down in terms of the activity they carry out daily, they slow down in terms of the attention they are giving to the partners they have in their life, uh, or others become abusive, others disconnect people totally. So it's basically when we talk about men being toxic, we refer to them projecting the energies towards others. So I want to talk about uh, assume uh, men in terms of relationship. Then when they have broken up with a lady, 
they pick another relationship immediately. So they don't have the time to, to hate. So they get into another relationship thinking that it will grow very fast. Or they get into another relationship with a lot of pain or with a lot of hopes. So affects that one, let's say it affects the daily life. And I think um, the point that Ken has brought up is very important. Energy. Because at the end of the day, both genders, male and female, if you, if you go through something and you don't deal with it, the energy piles up inside. So at the end of the day, you will release it in a, in a certain way. And then picture this, these men, they don't talk, they don't open up, they don't face their issues. I'll say it, they are important, important in Kiswahili, so at the end of the day, they relate with They have their spouses, they have their family members, yes, yeah. they have their loved ones. So you see a certain character in them, which Ken was saying about being violent, you know. And as a society, we wonder how, how come some men behave in a certain way. And I think from our conversation, we are now seeing the root cause, you know. And that one already is telling us that there is a gap in the society when it comes to men. And that is where now the aspect of toxic masculinity comes in. We label men in a certain way, and now they have to be confined in this box of how the society labels them. But inside this box, they are not comfortable, they are pressed, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And then, you know, the another, another thing can people also have to realize yeah, yeah, yeah. is, once they're in this box, it affects also people around, around them. them. Yeah. So the issue of toxic masculinity is not only affecting the men specifically, but yes. it's affecting the society as a whole. As a whole. Yeah, and uh, talking about uh, toxic masculinity, let's talk about the environment that these men are brought up. Uh, you find either the father is violent, or you find the mother is violent. So all these, they, they develop yearly. You find you are from a, a this family or from that family and then when you come together different personalities are coming together either one from a humble family or a violent family so all these they build up they build up they build up now you find most of the men we, we are talking about they also project this their toxic side because of the ladies they meet you get it yeah because there's so a lot that people demand from you you know what you have to get this you have to get this you have to get this then at the end of the day you realize you have to, to work hard to get them. For example, if you have a lady who wants you to drive a car in the next uh, two months and you just got a job uh, two weeks ago. So those are the kind of things that they protect themselves with, uh, and then they come out toxic to another person because that pressure is too much. Yeah, yeah they think uh, we, we know men are providers mm -hmm. so yeah. you get into a relationship with a guy and Probably that guy is still in beginning stages, yeah? Yes, yes, yeah. So the pressure comes into the guy and feels the need to have to provide. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that one also puts them in a corner, which is not also healthy yeah. for them. Then there's also this point I always see that, is it okay for a man to cry? Ken, do you think, is it okay for a man to cry? And by that, mm -hmm. I don't mean crying in public, you know, in private. Mm -hmm. But let's say, for example, you are going through something and you have your best friend. Is it okay for you to go and cry in front of your best friend? It is okay, but in terms of psychology, they say you need to bottle up your pain. Because you don't need the, uh, the negative energy to be building inside. So you find, let's talk about uh, health issues. You find if a woman has a certain kind of condition, we will live more than men. Because... If she is able to talk to another lady, you know what, I'm going through this. But men, it lives inside. And in fact, uh, talking about that in terms of stigmatization, yeah. men are stigmatized more than women. Yeah. Because a man will say, you know what, I'm strong, I need to have this kind of a disease. But for, for, for ladies, they will talk about it. Yeah. Yeah. So you need to bottle up the feelings. You need to speak to someone. You need to find someone you can talk to. Someone who understands your feelings more. Someone who you, you can relate with. You know, people are always thinking about, um, if I share my weakness, I just want to refer to episode one. Yeah. Uh, if I show you my scars, will you judge me by my scars? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, men always feel they will always be judged by their scars. Yeah. But women are like, they're like friends, real friends. So, it's, it's high time for men to come together and say, you know what? 
I'm going to be a brother to you. Yeah. That spirit of brother where you need to talk to each yeah. other. Yeah. 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 Thank you. And also, uh, in line with that, the spirit of brotherhood, mostly you will get, most I've, I've seen even for my, within my circles or the friends I have, the, the male friends, they keep. Mostly project, project, you know, those yeah. intimate moments of, you know, I'm going through this, I need someone to talk to, or even cry before them, it's very rare. It's very rare. Mostly I see, toughen up, move on, you know, it's life, we need to hustle. I just want to add something. Yeah. Yes, I've been mentoring young people in film and TV production uh, for four years now. But I've met so many young people going through problems. That's why I was like, um, I felt it wise to come up with stories that we empower them, stories that will, will at least change their lives. So what is common about the people and the stories I have is that they don't speak up. You see, they don't speak up. So you need to bottle up the thing. You need to find someone. Even if you don't find someone, at least speak to God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's really important. Yeah. Thank you. So I guess we are now realizing that the society is on a different side yeah. and this side that we are at is directly impacting all of us at the end of the day so that is why it's important we have such conversations so that we see where are we at and where do we want to be at what changes can, can we do can we implement to help each other at the end of the day so i think for our take so we realize it's okay not to be okay it's okay for a man to cry. It does not only apply to us women, because you know if a lady cries, it's very normal. Yeah. But I think it's high time we see that if a man keeps issues to himself, it brings more destruction to him and the people around him. Unlike if he would have opened up, you yeah, know. Yeah, and yeah. then also remember these men are also in charge of their in charge of families, you know, they are the heads in the houses, they are older brothers. They are looked up to probably in school, organizations, companies. So how, how will they manage all these things if they are not able to talk about the issues that are affecting them? I think that is my take for this episode. Maybe Ken will tell us what the final word he has for you guys. Uh, mine, mine is just to talk to men. Um, we all have challenges, right? As men, yeah? And we need to find solace where we can at least open up we can bottle up our feelings but at the same time we need to sometimes sit down and reflect on our decision as men sometimes it causes a lot of harm to other people but at the same time going forward you as a man what are you doing as an individual to at least grow others because that is the source of happiness that a man should have you should not have the ego to set his cause about things you've done to other people or you want to do other people. Yeah, so guys, um, I, la- I enjoyed this conversation. I believe it also lets you guys in a food for thought. If you've been following our uploads, we realize our hashtag is food for thought. So that is why we are doing these conversations to just get us thinking, yeah? So see you guys on episode 5. We are wrapping up season 1 in episode 5. And yes, we have a surprise, right? Yeah, we have a surprise for you guys for episode 5. We won't reveal it now, so make sure you keep on watching. Episode 5 will be awesome, right? Yeah. Yeah, so see you guys. Real Stories.